Morena, welcome to church today. Kia ora, ni hao, huan ying, bonjour et bienvenue, welcome to St Matthew's. Good morning, welcome to St Matthew in the city. Hi, welcome to church today. Welcome to St Matthew in the city. Welcome to St Matthew's in the city. Good morning and welcome to St Matthew's in the city. Good morning. Welcome to St Matthew in the city. Good morning and welcome to St Matthew's. No my hearty my. Welcome to worship again with St Matthew in the city for the last Sunday of August, our second Sunday in this lockdown. We're hoping that you're settling into your lockdown routines and finding a rhythm of life that serves you well. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, the love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. God, God is, is with, with us. us. Here, Here we, we find new, new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is good news for the poor, release for the, poor, for for the captives, captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and, and liberty for those who are oppressed. The sentence from today is from the prophet Micah. What does God require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? And we pray together, living presence of fierce and tender love, filling us with anger at injustice, and clothing anger with compassion, May we never lose respect for human beings, each and all created in your image, that we may overcome all desire to harm and all prejudice that treats others as less than human. We pray this after the pattern of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfilment of God's own purpose, God gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of God's creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, 
They are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to anger, and slow to speak. Guidelines from the letter of James for lockdown living, for social media, and for any interactions really. Listen deeply, speak only when we really have something to say, and watch our anger, in particular those fast reactions. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. We're all feeling the stress, aren't we? We're all feeling worried about everything from supermarket runs to loved ones waiting for results, people dealing with other health crises. We're worried about incomes and jobs and when we're going to see our families again. None of this is easy. 
The letter of James is written for a Christian community who had plenty of worries in their times, maybe around the year 100 to 120. James is the name of the brother of Jesus who led the first Christian community in Jerusalem, and this letter will be written by a descendant of his, or a descendant of that community, but using the mana of James's name for gravitas in what they want to say. The community the letter is written for is obviously having quite a few issues. James has a list. He criticises them for treating the rich and the poor differently, for gossiping and speaking badly of one another, for not paying a fair wage, and for not helping the sick. He has quite the list to take up with the recipients of this letter. But James is perhaps best known for the phrase, be doers of the word, not merely hearers. And by that he means acting on your faith, acting on what you hear from God, not just sitting on it. As people of faith, we're called to live our faith. It's not just an internal, mystical, spiritual thing. It requires action. James says true religion is to care for the orphans and the widows. Throughout the Bible, that phrase, orphans and widows, means those needing the care of the community in James's time or in biblical times. Because if you were an orphan or a widow, there was no social welfare system. You had no one to care for you. So think of it as code for those most needy in our society. We might list those without homes or income, those with no family support. We might think of those named in the Royal Commission on Abuse and Care or those in prison. We might think of refugees. We might think of communities affected by climate change. In COVID times, we would list those with underlying health conditions, the elderly, poorer communities, supermarket workers. Being doers of the word, acting on our faith at this time, means doing everything we can to look out for others. You know the list. Staying home, wearing a mask, scanning in, getting tested and getting vaccinated. We've heard this advice hundreds and thousands of times and yet somehow we still, still seem to struggle to do it every day. So James writes to us today from 2,000 years ago from a different context with different political realities, but with the same human nature. The same human nature that allows others to suffer and sees putting ourselves first. James doesn't tell us to be quick to listen and slow to speak because it's the right thing to do. Any self-help book can tell you that. James begins with the nature of God, the generous nature of God in whose image we are created. If God is generous and good, then we can be too. If God cares for the orphan and the widow, then we can as well. It's much deeper than just being nice to our neighbour because we should. It's much deeper than teaching our children good values. It's about the very nature of who we are as human beings. Human beings created in the image of a good and generous God. So when you wear your mask and get your vaccine, you're putting on the armour of God, to quote last week's reading. When you go and get your neighbour some groceries, and when you only buy what you need for now, you're caring for others in their distress. And when you listen more than speaking, when you check yourself on social media, you are following the way of righteousness, to quote James. Having said that we need to listen more than speak, we do need to speak out and encourage anyone we know who's falling down the rabbit hole of COVID conspiracy theories. We need to encourage them to look at better sources of, of more information. 
And we need not to listen to those, church leaders included, who are telling people not to get vaccinated. They seem to claim they have some magic protection from the virus, and they are wrong. We need not to listen to them, and we need to speak up when they do. James says they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror and immediately forget who they are called to be. He says if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive hearts, their religion is worthless. So let's listen to our scientists and be really sure of our sources of information Let's listen to each other and listen to God as James did. Be doers of the word. Reach out to those who need help. Ask for help if you need it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. For every generous act of giving with every perfect gift brings us closer to God and closer to being the people that we were created to be.
Kororia ki te atua i runga rawa, maunga rongo ki runga ki te whenua, ki ngā tangata katoa he whakaro pai. Let us be at peace within ourselves. Let us accept that we are profoundly loved and need never be afraid. Let us be aware of the source of being that is common to us all and to all living creatures. Let us be filled with the presence of the great compassion towards ourselves and towards all living things. Realizing that we are all nourished from the same source of life, may we live so that others not be deprived of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live and thrive. Let us pray that we ourselves cease to be a cause of suffering to one another. With humility, let us pray for the establishment of peace, peace in our hearts and peace on earth. Remembering especially the people of Afghanistan and Haiti and communities here in Aotearoa coping with the pandemic. And so may God kindle in us the fire of love to bring us alive and give warmth to the world. And we pray together. Lead me from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead me from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead me from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our heart, our world, our universe. Ake tonu ake. Amine. Kua kona nei tātou e tō tātou ariki, kā i noi tātou. E tō mātou mātou i te rangi, ki a tapu tō inga wā, ki a tai mai tō ranga tira tanga, ki a mea te tau e pai ai ki ronga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi. O mai ki a mātou ai ane, he taro ma mātou mo tēnei rā, mūrua o mātou hara, me mātou hoki e muru nei, i o te honga e hara ana ki a mātou. Aua hoki mātou e kāwea ki a whakawaia, engari whakorangi a mātou i te kino. Nau hoki te ranga tira tanga, te kaha, me te karoria, ake, ake, ake. Āmine. We're really glad that you joined us today and we hope that you will continue to be with us over the next few weeks. 
During the month of September, the church across the world celebrates the season of creation, where we particularly think about our need to care for creation and giving thanks for God's gift of creation. My colleague Reverend Kate Thorne will be leading us for the next three weeks along with some of our parishioners as we reflect on this year's theme of the season of creation, being at home in creation. So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus. And the blessing of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Spirit of grace, be with you now and always. Amen. Go now, for the Spirit of God is alive in the land. Amen. We go in the power of love.